So while everybody else is talking about the coronavirus, what we do on this channel will focus about the numbers and the charts, specifically the 13 market moves numbers that oftentimes precisely predict the move before it actually happens. So I'm going to walk you through specifically how this particular sequence in the 13 market moves actually helped us nail the drop that has taken place today, guys. And another thing that is even more important for you, depending on the time you're actually watching this video, is what will actually happen over the course of the next couple of days that could position you to know the specifics on how to trade this market in the next 72 hours. Now, this video is going to be highly valuable if you are an active trader. So here it is. I'm going to walk you through some charts. I'm going to walk you through some historical analogs to show you guys exactly what you should be expecting in the next 72 hours of trading. So apparently, 7-7-12-12-7 on first sight may appear like it's a nice, cozy, little bullish sequence going on here. But indeed, it is highly bearish. And you would have known that if you did two things. Number one, if you would have taken the 13 Mark Smooth Formula course. And number two, if you were subscribed to our daily videos and alerts. So this sequence was actually shared with our 13 Mark Smooth Daily Analysis uh, video subscribers. And this particular sequence, guys, right here, as bullish as it looks, it actually points to a three-day lower in the market. Now, this is not all you need to know, clearly, in order to trade this. So we're going to look at specific sectors. I'm going to show you specific charts, showing you detailed comparison, literally even describing the point move that certain stocks can make. So pay very close attention. Okay, opposed. Okay, so here's the deal. Opposed to everyone talking about the drop today, on February the 20th, after it happened, we actually warned our paying members that get the alert, okay, about this drop before it actually happened. Here's specifically, two days in a row, we've been on it, February 19th, okay, yesterday, guys, we're talking about how we're targeting this level, 33.92, start buying puts, okay, monitoring the VIX and all the behaviors, Apple, LRCX, uh, Tesla, BKNG, puts, puts, all that stuff was going on given plenty of opportunities for you to enter this situation right here at 33.92. This is when the alerts were going out. And specifically, another alert went right here 11 minutes before this drop happened. So uh, if you're a day trader or swing trader, guys, this were some phenomenal opportunities because the market looked highly, highly bullish. It did only temporarily went a few points higher. Now, this happened after hours. So, you know, if you're trading options, and that's exactly what we're doing on this channel. We we'll trade weekly options, guys. This would have had no impact whatsoever. So we pretty much nailed the top again. Now, on February 19th, okay, when we send out these alerts, guys, we get very specific. So specifically for Apple price, when we recommended the alert, look at the timing of this. It was 11.33 a.m. when Apple was trading at 3.24.20. Tesla was trading at 9.41.8. Uh, BKNG was trading at 19.70. LRCX was trading at 3.36.36. And clearly, when we made that attempt to break that 33.92 the second time, we're paying attention to the VIX. And VIX was saying, hell no. So we said, add some more damn puts. More alerts were sending out, hey, Tesla can't hold this double top at 940. Buy puts, buy puts. And clearly, there's no way you could have missed these trades if you were a subscriber. Now, the only way you could have missed them, um, if you're maybe a subscriber to this channel, but you're not a subscriber to any of our services, and if you'd like to know more about that, you can click the link below, take action, and rock, so you can have an awesome year trading. But uh, Apple, so this is when the alert was sent out, right? Uh, just a few cents off the top. This is the alert. This is what happens to Apple after that. Um, this is the alert in Tesla. Alert right here. $3 within the top. Another alert. Another alert. Boom. Okay. Like, guys, you got to understand this drop right here in 900 strike puts, the guys that started buying them right here, I mean, they're up sixfold by the time the stock gets right here. So when we're sending the alert, these uh, 900 strike puts, they were priced about um, eight, nine bucks. Um, and they were going, you know, five, six times of that uh, by, the time we, by the time we got this move uh, today. LRCX, guys, this is the time of the alert. Yeah, sometimes the alerts are not going to be 100 precise. Check this out. After we send the alert, yes, the stock still does move higher. Another dollar and 20 cents. Jesus Christ. Sure, I hope you had enough fucking patience to stay in this trade because this is what happened next. 
February 19th, more alerts about puts. Okay, a little lower shoot, 33.94. Guys, February 20th, when the market opens, guess what? Okay, we specifically say right when Tesla is actually going higher, buy some more Tesla puts right before the drop comes in. Some other trades, VIX puts. Guys, th these were three, four hundred percenters right here. Okay, EPAM, guys, three, four, actually, this one closer to 500 percent. Okay, Domino's when we were trading moved 11 bucks in just three seconds lower quick. I mean, can you imagine getting to the trade two minutes later like you double your money? I mean, guys, this is freaking insane. So um, this is what specifically went out today on February 20th, early in the day. Look at the timing of this, right? 1021 would say $50 move lower in Tesla could happen at any moment. And then we follow up at 1049 a.m. We said specifically this move lower can happen in the next 11 minutes by 1102 a.m we send it out when at 10 49 a.m 10 49 a.m is when we said buy more puts look we said spy puts qqq puts apple 225 to 20 puts right before what we gave you a warning exactly 13 minutes 13 minutes before what before this happens today now notice nobody was telling you about this in the news if you're watching cnbc on bloomberg nobody was going out there and saying hey guys in about 13 minutes get ready the market is gonna drop off by a few hundred points no what were they saying they were saying about this they were talking about this only after this move happened all of a sudden you have headlines surfacing oh man what's going on with the market nobody can figure this shit out so the question is, how did we figure it out? And how do we keep figuring stuff like this out before it actually happens? I'm going to give you a very specific answer. So it's using our proprietary historic analog. And no, in some prior videos, I've shown you some historic analogs, guys, where I look at certain instances where the market crashed in the past and we analyze this and we try to overlay it to the current market conditions. The historic analog I'm talking about right here is our own proprietary analog of 13 market moves which you cannot get anywhere else you can only get it here and in order to really utilize it you gotta understand the 13 market smooth formula so with that said what is how did you nail this like kill us like the real deal what's going on here so here's the real deal guys look at this sequence in june 2018 it was a sequence 7 12 12 12 7 now, for those of you that know the 13 market move formula, guys, you should go review this chapter where we go in detail about these 12 moves and 7s and stuff. But even if you don't know nothing about the 13 market move formula, just for the purpose of this video, trying to make the most of it, you should understand that 13 market move formula gives you 13 probabilities and variations on certain chart patterns that the market is going to create each day. Understanding these sequences and how they fall in together over a number of days, like two, three, five days could actually give you a higher probability of the next outcome. So understanding this sequence, actually we've had a, a number of instances where this sequence resulted in a bearish move lower. So basically you got these green moves that result in a red move, red move, red move. So basically the sequence we noticed when the sequence was uh, completed, now understand this is not the dates for this month. This is not February we're looking at, right? This is the historic data from 13 market moves in June 2018. So when you're looking at this, you got 7, 12, 12, 12, 7 points to a potential three-day move lower. In other words, red days where the markets are losing some traction. Now, this is not just everything, right? Besides the numbers, actually, you got to pay attention to the VIX and a few other factors. So notice where the VIX is. We match the VIX environment, right? VIX uh, back in June was trading between 12.4 and 15.2, uh, 13.14 area, right? These numbers on the VIX also match the current conditions in the current market environment. So when we put all this stuff together, we analyze these days and we're taking a closer look at the chart, which I'm going to show you some powerful stuff here in just a second, guys. So when we combine all that stuff, we this is how we nailed that move yesterday. Um, and it's surprising, like even the move, even the dates almost match in this, which is freaking insane right so this is the sequence we got now in february 2020 basically got 7 7 12 12 7 so almost identical sequence right so instead of uh move 12 right here we actually get the 7 so 7 7 12 12 7 and resulting in a move three today guys and look at where the vix 
14.84721, 15.33. Guys, this is freaking insane. It matches, like almost every little detail is matched here. Um, and this is actually kind of scary because this is like insanely accurate. This is how we're able to pre predict this drop 11 minutes before it freaking happens. Understand what a move three is, okay? And when to actually come in and to add to your position or to really pull the trigger is what's really going to make you money with trading weekly options. So understand this. We analyze the historic data from 13 market moves, find the same VIX environment, laid it over onto current condition, matched it with the current move. This is how we were able to um, basically nail that move 100%. So I'm going to show you again in just a second like some of the things that you should really know based on this historic match right here of what could be actually taking place uh, tomorrow on Friday, uh, which is going to be the 21st, and uh, the 24th, uh, which, which is going to be Monday, okay? And you may be shocked to find out what could actually happen Monday, so uh, pay very close attention. But first, guys, in the last video, I promised I was going to give you an answer to this question at the end of the video. Guys, if you're really trying to learn, make sure you finish this video still the end because I don't know, if you're a trader and you really want to make some money in the market, I mean, you wouldn't do something stupid like if you're a doctor and you're doing a surgery and you're trying to, to learn how to learn, let's say, a new surgery, like, you wouldn't just learn how to do half of the surgery, right? I mean, that wouldn't be an effective strategy. So to me, that would be the equivalent of somebody like starting the video, not finishing till the end and missing some crucial details um, that could prevent you from actually taking a really awesome trade. So make sure you finish this video till the end if you're really trying to learn or if this stuff is boring, guys, hey, no problem. Just, uh, you know, find another channel to watch, unsubscribe. We, you know, we're actually trying to decrease the number of the subscribers we got um, so we can only talk to the ones that are really trying to learn and make something out of this information. So basically the question that was proposed last time in the last video, we noticed that some stocks that are reporting poor earnings, they create these black candles and reversals. Uh, the more interesting observation was, okay, not only do we have bad companies reversing on bad earnings, but we're also noticing a trade recently where good companies are reversing on good earnings, such as Shopify. And this is why even the company uh, ends up positive that day of the earnings announcement, there was a lot more money made on the put side rather than the call side. And understanding that is critical if you're a day trader and you're trading options. Okay, So the answer to this question, what does this really mean? So it's not just bad companies that are reversing. Now, notice that typical reaction to a bad company would be just a straight drop. But first, on bad reports, the companies actually go higher, stock price-wise, and then they reverse. And then the good reports are doing the same thing. Basically, guys, the simple answer, put it in a nutshell, it's a freaking market top. That's what that means. So when you're seeing, um, I didn't have a ton of time to insert a ton of charts here because I was trying to explain something else. But when you see good companies reporting good earnings and you put them on a daily chart and they look like this, that signifies a market top, guys. Um, and just some few questions uh, for your thought and analysis is why is gold at eight year highs while stock market is at all time highs? Basically, we got a solid case of a divergence here. Uh, gold shouldn't be trading at eight year highs while the market is rocketing to the moon practically, right? So considering that gold is breaking out daily, setting new highs while the market is pretty much doing the same, uh, this divergence is not going to last and we believe it's going to resolve into the market uh, actually come to reality and stock prices adjusting lower and not the other way around. So this is a worthy observation that uh, we're probably going to discuss in greater detail in this, some of the upcoming videos. Now, contrary to the current belief in the markets that more stimulus um, actually equals to higher stock prices, we believe exactly the opposite because of the law of uh, diminishing marginal utility. So the stimulus now is not uh, an old thing and it's been utilized and overutilized and at this point it's abused and it's going to have less and less impact on the market. And I think that's exactly what the market is going to do. It's going to, it's going to come to a realization that it doesn't matter how big uh, of China, how big stimulus China is putting on, 
the results of this stimulus oftentimes number one they're not seen immediately there's always a lag in uh, the stimulus and the positive impact it's supposed to have on the economy but this time stimulus you know when when stimulus was used for the first time it was effective uh, multiple times worldwide. It's been effective. But now that everybody's using it and abusing it, it's going to have less and less impact on the economy. Uh, we're to the point where we can't lower rates. And this could be the reason why, by the way, uh, some of the banking stocks could literally see some strong, strong headwinds going on in, in the next uh, few months here. So don't expect... Goldman Sachs would be trading at this level of 230s. Uh, I mean, it could drop back below 200 level uh, because there's some crazy stuff that could be going on. So more on that in some new videos, guys. And another th food for thought here, guys, is why is Warren Buffett not buying anything? Okay, so uh, his investors are complaining. Why isn't he buying more deals? And he's sitting on the biggest cash pile. Uh, that just continues to grow. So why is Warren Buffett not buying? Well, the answer is quite simple. He's not buying because he doesn't buy high and sell low. So, I mean, as you notice, Warren Buffett is not the one out there uh, doing the cheerleading party saying, hey, Tesla, 7,000, I'm buying right here at eight, $900. Heck yeah, put me in. Okay, you don't see him do stupid shit like that. Okay, but all the other cheerleaders on Wall Street, they're the ones that are doing that, ignoring, okay, the man who knows better what the fuck needs to be done. So if he's not buying, it tells you maybe it's not a good time to buy because maybe he's collecting the cash in the expectation of a drop. So then he can really utilize this cash pile that he's been growing instead of buying companies now, he can buy them at a much better price here in not so distant future. Okay, so what does the current formula sequence and historic analog of the 13 market moves can tell us about the market action on uh, Friday and Monday? So just to refresh this again, so five bullish days, bullish sequence resolves in three bearish days, okay? Here's what we got if we go back in the history and study specifically what happened, right? I just shown you this slide, guys, so you can understand that couple of charts I'm going to show you the historic chart so when we're looking at dates of 21st 22nd they pertain to June 2018 uh, so 21st was a Thursday 22nd was a Friday 25th was a Monday on June uh, uh, 2018 this 25th date in June 2018 would be an equivalent of current Monday February 24th so I'm about to show you some charts and try to overlay them and make some comparisons make sure you understand that that the 25th is this day that we're trying to compare to the 24th which is coming up on Monday February the 24th 2020 okay so here's what happened um, on these dates February 20 uh, uh, basically June 21st June 22nd uh, June 25th, okay, so you've had, if, if we're to lay it over, okay, so this is today, February 20th would be the equivalent of June 21st, as you can see on Friday, which was at, at the time June 22nd, the market didn't drop a whole lot, so the move on Thursday in the market, this red candle represents daily action in the market, was a greater move than on Friday, so don't expect a huge move Friday February the 21st do expect a bearish move meaning that at some point something can go lower bounce uh, possibly intraday and move lower but don't expect like a huge huge crash now the crash comes in on Monday where the market gaps down which would be the equivalent of June 25th 2018 that would coincide with February 24th 2020 where you actually get a 50 point drop in S&P representing you know easily uh, about a 2% move so this is how it looked exactly on Monday 6 25th 2018 S&P minus 56 points now that represented 2% so if we go based on the percentage points now that S&P is actually trading at like 3380 roughly 3370 we can actually see 
even a larger numerical value. I mean, we could see maybe a 60, a 70 point move in S&P. And so when this particular move right here, guys, this was just the intraday move on uh, Monday, June the 25th. So this was one day. This does not include what we can get on the 21st of February, uh, Friday. Okay. So here's another situation uh, comparing the VIX that was developed. As you can see, the VIX was between 14 and 17. Take a look at where the VIX is. Um, today, tomorrow, guys, check out the VIX environment. It's going to match this numbers. It's going to be right around this range. So we got to match on the VIX. Um, Microsoft, you guys know we don't trade Microsoft. Uh, we got better stocks for trading options uh, on. So uh, the reason I got the Microsoft chart here is because it, it, this is what Microsoft was doing on June 25th, 2018. Basically, this would be the equivalent of me saying, hey, this is a representation of a tech sector and tech sector is about to do this. So as you can see at the time, the numbers are different on Microsoft, right? $100, $102 was the old time high at the time. Uh, so the numbers actually change. But what I want you to focus in is that the chart does not change. So what we really want to follow is just the pattern of the chart. So Microsoft at that point tops out at 102. This is your move on Friday, um, uh, June 22nd. This is your move on Monday, June uh, 25th. Okay, keep this in mind and try to lay it over. Uh, this uh, man I forgot to insert the slide basically if you pull up the chart of Microsoft um, for today you will see identical match on that chart um, Amazon guys at the time on uh, June 25th this is what it did from 1744 bucks which was the high uh, it basically made this hundred dollar move lower here is the basically how it looks on the daily chart so this hundred point move lower so this is the 21st 22nd 25th Boom, boom, boom. You, you got to drop from 1760 all the way to 1640. So about 100, 120 dollar move lower within that time frame. And if we were to lay it over right now, we can easily still have another 83 point drop in Amazon between February 21st and February 24th. So from here is where we closed uh, today, February 20th, guys. There's plenty more room for um, Amazon to actually go lower. Now, AVGO, guys, you know we spend a lot of time talking about shorting um, semiconductor stocks lately. And so AVGO, uh, our favorite right now is LRCX, but AVGO is the chart I was able to dig out from that time frame. So June 22nd, look, this is where the semiconductor story was right there uh, before going into, you know, the, 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 the drop off on the 25th. So this is AVGO before that Monday. And this is AVGO after that Monday. So $20 drop doesn't seem like, oh, it's not that big of a drop. But percentage-wise, it's a huge drop. It's actually a bigger drop than what I've just shown you on Amazon. So considering um, AVGO just uh, dropped today, 6 bucks already, uh, which was one of our alerts, by the way. And uh, it uh, it still got room to go to maybe 295 So maybe another $14 move here uh, over the course of the next couple of days here on AVGO. Uh, BKNG, if we're to analyze that, 625 was a big move, uh, about a hundred dollar move in uh, BKNG just that day alone. Uh, 627, interesting, it continued dropping off, so that is easily about a hundred thirty dollar move. Considering where BKNG is right now, guys, we can still get from current level of 1970, okay, 1970, 1980, we can easily get another hundred, hundred thirty dollar move lower in BKNG. In, in the next uh, couple of days here. And if we take a look at Goldman Sachs, I know $9 drop is not impressive, but of course you got to look at this, you know, on percentage basis, you also got to look at what it represents, uh, which to us it represents if uh, these financial stocks begin to sell off along with the technology sector, I mean, the market could easily drop by 10%. That's what we've been talking about, right? So this chart highly resembles the chart that Goldman Sachs and even the trading levels and so this nine dollar draw basically happens from where from 231 to 221 is it a coincidence or what this is Goldman Sachs today February 20th it trades at 232 231 okay so we think it can easily drop to 225 221 okay but this is like insane that we even got the same price points okay now BABA guys 
Uh, same thing, okay, within those two days, it's got like a 15-point drop. So we can get an equivalent of that. I didn't have time to insert the BABA chart here, but you understand like how to do this now. So you can use this strategy and calculate some of the other stock. Take that all the time frame, overlay to the current one, look at the percentage drop, target, target about the same percentage drop. So the importance of these analysis is this, um, we've seen too many similarities, right? So the technology sector that we have been talking about that can easily drop by much larger amount than the rest of the market okay that is confirmed on this time frame the financials are confirmed on this time frame gold is also confirmed in this time frame and vix in other words there's just too much evidence here it's really overwhelming and the matches are almost precise and almost perfect so um, i don't think as a trader uh, you know anybody should be ignoring this this is why I'm taking my time to record this for you guys. So big move in gold. As you can see, gold had very bullish momentum going on in June. So that's what this chart is showing you right here. Um, and clearly, gold recently had a very bullish momentum as well. So when we compare all these charts and look at some other market characteristics, so we got similar characteristics in gold, guys, right here. Uh, breaking, uh, you know, 1620 today on February 20th, like awesome stuff, okay? And again, it shouldn't be happening if the market is trading all-time highs. VIX environment, uh, one point from this chart to take is this is where VIX was uh, then in June 2018, so between like uh, 13 and 20. Uh, similar thing here between 13 and 20, but don't rule out the fact that we're going to actually revisit that 20 level on the VIX uh, by Monday, February the 24th. Um, okay, uh, actually here, I got some slides, guys. I got some really cool stuff coming up for you. So what caused the crash, the crash that no one remembers on Black Monday? And it's not the Black Monday you're thinking about, but August 31st, 1998. If you're interested to know how this Black Monday on August 31st, 1998 was forgotten, what has caused it? Um, I'm putting an entire video together for you. It's going to be a lengthy one, showing you a ton of charts, ton of historic comparisons. And more importantly, the video is going to show you what are some of the similarities we're observing now that could cause the market to do certain things here in the next 30 days to 60 days. So very important video if you're trying to learn charts and understand things, guys. So make sure if you're new here, you subscribe so you wouldn't miss out on this. Hey guys, if you are trying to learn more, if you have any questions about anything that was just discussed, if you have any questions about courses, our services, programs, make sure you go to this website right here, tradingoptionslive.com. Now we've got two locations where you can click to schedule a call. Okay, it's a 100% free call. You can ask any questions about stock market trading, whatever questions you have, we're here to answer them for you. So schedule this free call by clicking right here. Or you can also schedule a call right here, guys. Uh, so very simple. Uh, take advantage of this. Guys, you got to get clarity uh, before you go live putting these trades on. So if there's still some concerns or questions or whatnot, this is your chance to do it uh, this weekend. Uh, make sure you schedule a call. We will get a live person on the phone with you. So take advantage of this because at times... We simply have not been able to answer the amount of phone calls that have been scheduled, but now we got a few extra people um, that are helping us out with this. So I will guarantee that your questions will be answered. So take action, schedule a call, get your questions answered so you can become a better trader this year. Let's roll. I'll catch you guys on the next trade soon.